My name is Grace, and I am a black poet who will not be silenced as this country persecutes our people. I have a right to be angry. My mother made sure that I grew up knowing that I wasn't black. Okay, so I know that I'm black here, but she meant to make sure that the plight of the black American never found citizenship in the foreign landscape of me. That I never saw reflections of myself in the perverted storybook histories and that the saga of the collective black body was just ink on a page. That I never heard the noise of the black struggle to find justice, the black struggle to find peace, the black struggle to struggle freely, that the clamor of all of their black struggle white noised me to sleep. And this doesn't make my mother callous, this makes her careful because when living the loaned life of an immigrant, one cannot afford to spend time enlisting in new battles, but I guess you could say that the fight found me. Found me first when I was supposed to be angry about Katherine Johnson, and then again about Rodney King, and then again about Trayvon Martin, and then it stuck because I had too many reasons to be hypothetically angry, and then I feared for the future of the black body. And then I feared for my friends, my family, myself because the people in those stories looked a lot like us the same knotted hair the same callous feet the same minds that housed the same ideas that hid the same wounds that diverged centuries ago and much to my mother's dismay i have adopted the black body as my own because i have seen how it is so giving it stands immobile so that others have at least one stable thing to objectify it is a tool in the greater narrative, but only ever thinks itself constructor. It is uniformed, a crown of thorns, but only ever thinks itself royalty. Its power of inversion is remarkable that way, and necessary. And the black body is orphaned. It has never known home because it was torn away at a young age, too young to realize that its current place of residence is not natural, but I think that the black body now knows that something about our current existence is not natural. This place is not our home. This place does not see our beauty for our color and does not recognize our sacrifice for our silence. This place that they have dubbed home is nothing more than their paradise encased in barbed wire to keep the wild things in. This place was built to make sure that we always remembered our role here, but how could we forget? Forget that we are victim wearing the name tag of aggressor. Forget that those who protect us are the same ones who hunt us. Forget that our voice is drowned out by the uproar in our names. Forget that our suffering has been publicized, televised, and commoditized for the entertainment of the democracy. Forget that we are always dying of a curable disease. Forget that the country that persecutes us was built on the backs of our forefathers. But, but the black body? appreciates irony. We have to. We have had the best of our possessions seized. Yes, we are a nation under siege, but we will never stop screaming bloody murder because we call it how we see it, and we see it often. And if my mother ever asked me why I enlisted in the battle that she never wanted for me, I'd say it's because here and now, white noise is synonym for background, but black bodies on the ground is synonym for Thursday. I'd say that I am so tired of preemptively mourning. I'd say that our stories have been intertwined since before the beginning of time, and finally, I'd smile slowly, softly, and say that we will have no justice while our body is dismembered.